there are a billion people in the world who aren't within reach of a trained health professional. In developing countries, we're talking about 8.9 million people. And about that, we're talking about 3.6 million children included in that number. Um, and this number die each year because they don't have the necessary maternal, neonatal, child health services. But there are organizations who are taking this on. They are taking it head on. One of them is Last Mile Health, who train community healthcare workers in vital medical skills so that they can go the extra mile and help people in even the remotest of areas. I want to show you a short film now, just to show you how healthcare in Liberia has been revolutionized thanks to community health workers. Take a look. Liberia suffered 15 years ago. We have one of the worst doctor shortages in the world. If you're a two-year-old and you come down with a fever, your mom would have to put you on her back, get to the riverbed, get in a canoe, paddle across to the other side, and walk sometimes for up to two days just to get a diagnosis at a clinic. The tyranny of distance is what we talk about, that if you're too far away, you're the last to receive health services, but you're the one that often needs it the most. Our vision at Last Mile Health is to deploy a health worker for everyone, everywhere, every day. And we work with governments to take those networks of community health professionals and scale that nationally. The training that these folks receive covers everything from tracking the next Ebola, the next disease outbreak, to treating children for malaria, diarrhea, pneumonia, and malnutrition. That worker then is equipped with a backpack full of the medicines and the gloves and the treatments and the diagnostic equipment. We're starting with Liberia because we think that if we are able to show that it's possible to deliver a model for remote healthcare delivery that isn't conservative but radical, that goes further than has ever gone before, that lifts the standard of care for people in the most remote communities. We think that will generate momentum to help us get to the second and the third country. It's been true for all of human history that illness is universal and access to care is not. That doesn't have to be true in this century, and we have a chance to change that. It's so good to be my such important work. It really is. I'd like to welcome to the stage Raj Punjabi, founder of Last Mile Health, to share his plan to create a global army of community health workers. Please welcome him. Thank you, Aisha. I just got back a few weeks ago from caring for patients with some of these community health workers, and it was inspiring to see that in a place deep in the heart of the forest where the Ebola epidemic had nearly brought us to our knees, these community health workers who had gone door to door to find the sick, get them into care, break the chain of transmission, and help stop this virus are now providing care to the children and families you just saw in that film, and that the Liberian government is investing to scale this nationally so that every child and family in our country have access to care. Uh, other governments are trying to do this as well. In Ethiopia, I want to thank, thank the Bill and Melinda Gates and the foundation for what they're doing to push community health systems forward across the world. And we know this is important. We cannot achieve the global goals without investing in hiring, training, and equipping community health workers. In fact, we know that 
if we were to train a global army of community health workers to perform even 30 medical services, we could collectively save 30 million lives by 2030. But we simply can't do that without technology. We know that it's time. It's time for a collision between the community health worker revolution and the digital education revolution. And that's why we're creating, with partners here, the Community Health Academy to reinvent the education of community health workers and the leaders who support them for the digital age. I'm thrilled to announce today that a coalition of over 15 partners, the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, is launching the first phase of the Community Health Academy. We're starting with a free, open, online, continuing education platform and courses that will be provided for policymakers, managers, and nonprofit organizations who are looking to build strong national community health systems like Ethiopia's and Liberia's. We'll be launching our first online course this year, and it will be taught by leading community health innovators from Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Further down the line, we plan to create mobile apps that will enable community health workers to receive the very best in digital education resources, like video lessons on promoting family planning and a podcast on how to spot the next outbreak. And we'll work with partner countries to help ensure that community health workers don't remain an informal, under-recognized, undervalued group, but become a renowned, empowered profession like nurses and doctors. We're deeply grateful to the partners, who, and many of whom are here today, that are teaming up on this project. And I want to end by uh, uh, saying that our collective dream is for this academy to help contribute to the training of hundreds of thousands of community health workers, from the forest communities of West Africa to the fishing villages of Alaska, from the plains of rural India to the mountaintops of Afghanistan. And if this aligns with your vision, we hope you'll join us in this effort. Illness is universal, access to care is not. But as we say it, where I come from in West Africa, no condition is permanent. It's time. It's time for us to go as far as it takes to change this condition together. Thank you.